Hey, this is Jesse for bit to brain Today I want to go over a few Unix and Linux commands. We're going to be doing this in the OSX terminal. Now most of these commands are pretty basic. You'll be able to use them in any flavor of Unix or Linux. So it's just a great foundation, a starting guide if you've never messed with Unix or Linux and we're kind of interested in it. And you need some help navigating around or creating a directory, moving directories or viewing the contents within a directory, you know, just simple things like that. Eventually I want to do tutorials on more from the administrative side. So we're talking file permissions, user group ownership, uh, be able to look at what processes are hogging up your system resources, things like that. But for right now, we're just going to start with the basics. So the first thing you're going to do is open up your terminal. So you can hold down their shift command G key. And you can just navigate to that path. Type that in or go, or you can just go up to utilities, scroll down, go to utilities, terminal. Now I like to stick the terminal in my dock for simplicity, but I already have it there. Actually, I stick my utilities folder there because um, I go to it all the time. So I'll just hit the escape key because I already have it there. Did you select it? So now I pop open the terminal. Close that out because that's annoying. All right, now the first thing I want to do is PWD, print working directory. This shows us directory that we are currently in at the moment. Now, if we want to change directory, it is conveniently enough CD. Now, the CD command, if we just want to get to our login directory at any time, just CD a tilde, it'll send us there every time. So let's say we wanted to go to CD slash ETC, all right, but we wanted to come back to our Login directory, cd tilde. And we'll see we're back there where we started. If we want to go to the root directory, cd slash, slash just means root. You see if we do PD, pwd, we're in the root directory. Let's go back to our home directory again. Now let's say we want to go up one directory. This is our current path now. We want to go up one directory. So we want to go to users. We can do cd space dot dot slash now if we do pwd we are now in the users directory so let's go back home now let's say we want to go up two directories so we're going to go up to root cd space dot dot slash dot dot slash now we run pwd and we are in root let's get back pwd now this is getting kind of cluttered here so if you want to clear your screen it's just clear now, if you want to view the contents of our current working directory, it's just ls. If we wanted to view the contents of any directory, actually, we can just say ls. Let's say we want to view the contents of the music directory. Okay, that's pretty good. That's handy. But let's say we wanted to see file permissions, file sizes, and uh, who owns a file or a folder. We can actually type in ls-l. This is a long form. So we see now we uh, have a little more information. The D means a directory. So this desktop.ini is a file. So these are the permissions. The D in the beginning, obviously directory. This is who owns the file or folder. This is the group it's under. This is the date. And this is the time. And obviously the file or folder name. So let's say we want to see hidden files or folders. Well, we can add the dash A to that. Uh, there's really not too much there. Actually, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go to root. Okay. Let's clear the screen. All right, let's look at long form, and let's look at hidden files. So now we see a lot here. We see a decent amount of hidden files here. But see, that's kind of long. See how that runs off the screen? That's actually not too long, but that, but that is fairly annoying. So let's go ahead and... To get a previous command, hit the up arrow key, and let's pipe it. That is The pipe key is basically the backslash key that's underneath your delete key. Click that while you're holding down the shift key, and you can type in less after it. And that'll allow you to scroll down and scroll up, make it more easily viewable. And when you're done, hit the Q key. Now let's say we want to sort our results. We can do that with the capital S key. So I'm going to keep the LA, I'm going to keep the long form, I'm going to keep the hidden files, and I'm going to now add the capital S to it. That will sort by size. 
So as you see, the largest will be on top. I want the largest file size. Now let's say we wanted to reverse that. We can do that by adding the lowercase r. So what's great about these options, you can just throw them on, you do one dash, and then you do all the uh, options. So now we're going to sort it where the smallest is on top and the largest is on the bottom. There's also an ls-i that's pretty handy. That will give you the inode information, but that's a whole other topic, um, especially if you're in Linux. That's something you should know. But just know that it's there. And if you have any questions about these options, this command, ls, and the options involved with it, you can actually consult the man pages. So it's just man ls. This is good for any of these commands. And to get out of it, just hit the q command, or q key, sorry. Again, I'm going to clear the screen. Now, how do you make a directory? Let's go to our home directory. And how do you make a file? Well, first, to make a file, you can do touch. And we'll say sample file. And now you see we have sample file. To make a directory, you just type in mkdir. And we'll say sample dir. And now you have a directory. Now to delete a directory or file, let's start with a file, rm sample file.txt, and you see the file is now gone. So let's say we want to remove a folder. Let's try doing that the same way. It won't let us. You have to do it recursively. So you have to add the dash r. You can normally use lowercase or uppercase. It really doesn't matter. Most of the time, it doesn't matter. So you see now the folder is gone. So let's move a folder or file. Let's move it to the move folder. So with that, you use the mv command. So let's move test.txt. We're going to move that to move. And now we will ls move to see that it's in there and we see that it's now in there now let's say we want to move it back how do we do that simple enough mv now it's within our move directory so we type in move slash test txt and we want to put it in our current directory our current directory is outside of the move directory so now that's all the period means, current directory. So now you see that our test.txt is back where it should be. And if we run ls move, we see that test.txt is no longer there because it's moved into our current directory. Now, if we wanted to copy that file, we can use cp. And now if we run ls move, we'll see that test.txt has been copied there. Now let's clear the screen. All right, let's go over the echo command now. What is the echo command? The echo command writes arguments to standard output. So let's say, for instance, we have this is a test. We see this is a test. So let's say we want to output this to a file. Let's say we want to output this to our test.txt file. So hit the up arrow key. This is it'll, our last command will come up. Arrow, test, uh, test, uh, test, not text. Well, I can't type. So now, in order to view what's in the test.txt file, we can cat it. And cat just means to concatenate, combines files. And it'll display the contents of a file, which in this instance will be test.txt. This is a test. So let's say we want to add something else in there. We could say... This is a new test. Again, we're going to test.txt. And then we cat it. And we see this is a new test. Now let's say we want to have another line, then another line, another line. We would be able to append this file. We can do that by adding another arrow. So we'll say this is a brand new test. So now we cat it again, 
and we see this is a brand new test shows up. So if you're running administrative tasks, let's say you have to ping a server all day and you, you want the results to output to a file and you want to continually see new results, well, then you would probably do that uh, rather than just outright replacing the contents within the file. So the double arrow allows you to append it. And there's something else I want to show you within this test.txt. I'm going to open up in, in um, text editor. And I just want to do something real quick here. Uh, just Okay, I just want to show you, if you run the head command, that'll show you the first 10 lines of the file. Now, if you just want, let's say, the first two lines, you can do it like that. And conversely, if you want to run tail, tail will also, by default, show you the last 10 lines rather than the first 10 lines, but you could do the same thing. Just do dash two and see the last two lines. So that's really handy if you have a long file, a file with tons of contents. And what's cool about this is you could combine this with um, something like grep. So let's say we wanted to grep basically searches input files for a match of a given pattern list. Um, so when it finds a match, it basically covers it or copies it to standard output. So if we want to say, um, let's say brand. So it'll search for that for us. This is a brand new test. It'll find that line where that word is used. So that's pretty handy. So you could combine some of these commands, which is especially helpful if you have a really long file output. So let's say you were searching your system. Um, or let's say we're running an ls command. So let's say we're running an ls command and we didn't know the exact name of the file we were looking for. So we say, we know it starts with te. We can use regular expressions and wildcards to help us out. So this will come up, all the results that come up with te and then whatever. So we see test.txt, we see test disk.log. Now, let's say we go a little further and we're not really sure. <laughs> For some reason we lose our minds and we don't know it ends at txt. Well, there you go. That'll help us out. And we don't see the test disk.log. Well, let's say we have all but one letter. We're not sure what that last letter is. We can actually use the question mark to fill in one character. Now we can use this anywhere. We can use this here. So we don't know the E is there. We lost our minds again. That'll come up. We can also, for this, do a search and say, well, we know it's between we know it's between D and G, but we're not really sure. That will also work for us. Now we can also say, well, we know it's not in between A and D. We definitely know that. This exclamation point just means not. So it's not going to be between A and D. So there, there's a few ways you can use to uh, search for files on your system. Uh, regular expressions and wildcards are very handy. This is just touching upon it. So this is just the beginnings. You could see a regular expressions and wildcards to see how it can help you out uh, when you're doing searching. So speaking of searching, I want to look at a few ways to locate uh, files and folders on your system. First would be locate. All right, the first command I want to talk about, we just talked about locate, and I want to use a locate command. So I want to use this to locate files on my system. So I type in locate, and let's look at test.txt. That's a decent amount, but let's say I want to narrow that down a little more. So I'd say grep, and let's say I want to use my name. You got to use grep in the name, or grep in the command, as the command, or nothing will happen. All right, so now I've limited a little bit. That's pretty handy. Now, the first time you run locate, it's going to have to update the database. It's, you'll probably get a prompt telling you that, and it might take a little while. But once it's updated, you should be fine. You should be able to use it whenever you want to. Let's try this again. Let's say locate Google Drive. That's pretty long. So I'd want to pipe that out to less. And that's still pretty long. So maybe in this instance, I'd want to run grep. So maybe I grep my name. Let's try that. 
and we've really limited it. It's only one now. So that's kind of handy. So you see how you combine all these commands and options um, to help you in your searching. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. So let's run uh, the find command now. So if we're running the find command, so let's say we want to search on our present directory, find dot, that would be our present directory. So let's say name, dash name, and we want to search for test. Now I'm going to capitalize this. It doesn't find anything. So let's say I change it to iname. And now it finds the test file that is in our current directory. Why is that? Because I used iname. iname is not case sensitive. So name will be case sensitive. So I usually use iname, usually, I'm going to say like 90% of the time, depending on circumstances, but I find that's easier to use. So I stick with that. So again, find is one of those things you could combine with less, you could combine with grep, kind of at your discretion. So the final command I want to look at as far as searching goes is specific for OS X. Since we're on OS X, let's go ahead and look at this command. It's called mdfind. A lot of people don't know about this command. I find it really helpful. mdfind. mdfind basically finds the files in your system that are indexed by Spotlight. So again, let's look at, um, let's look at test again. So it comes up with a boatload of them. Tons of tests. Again, let's grip this out. What we can do in this instance, though, is actually, that'll be more helpful, is to use name. Now you see it's limited to just that specific name, test.txt. So with this grip didn't help us as much. Using the name option really helped us. MDFind is really good for that, but what I really like about MDFind is the fact that you can search for specific uh, file types within a given date range. So let's say we want to search for PDF files that were updated this week. Nothing. So let's try this month. And now we have our results there. So that's handy. So let's see, um, let's say text files. So that's pretty nice. So let's say we grep that out. And we want to just do resume. Now you see, these are all the text files from the last month that have a resume in it. So that's pretty handy. Again, you can consult the man pages, uh, do a Google search, um, give you further explanation on the command and the options available within it. Some other things that are helpful, um, the history key, uh, that'll tell you some of the commands you used earlier. You can also combine the history key with grep as well. So if you wanted to see something related to um, that key, so let's say we want to look at, um, I don't know, the ls command. Anytime that was referenced, you can see that there. All right, there's a few other commands that may help you out. Um, I want to eventually do a tutorial on Linux administration uh, starting from the ground up. But there's a couple of things you could do now that may be helpful to you, you may not know about. So if you want to look at the hard drive usage on your system, use the df command, uh, df-h. We we'll actually put it in readable form, human readable form. Uh, if you want to look at running processes on your system, you can do top. That'll show you the processes, the load average, the memory used. If you want to see a list of processes, you can also use the PS command. There's many options for this. You can use AX, which is pretty helpful. Now, let's say there's a process on your system that you want to quit. Now, the best way to do that is to grep it. So I'm going to say, uh, it's case sensitive. So I want to close box cryptor. All right, that's this little icon right here. So let's say I, I, now I have it. I know what the process 
ideas, that's 461. So now I can just say kill dash 3, 461. And now icon's gone, process is closed. If we run grep box scripter, you see it's no longer there. That's just the grep that we did. And the actual process is closed. So that's all I'm going to do today. Like I said, I want to do a, uh, more Linux administration tutorials and stuff like that in the future. But for right now, that'll be it. So again, thanks for watching. This is Jesse for Bit to Brain.